Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. I'm here with a very, very special guest. He is the former Newcastle left back. He is Jose Enrique. Jose, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you? Good? Very, very good. Very good. Jose, how is it in Spain? Obviously, with the, obviously coronavirus is a massive topic. Is everybody safe and well with your family at the minute? Yeah, well, to be honest, I've been lucky because at the moment everyone is safe around me. That obviously the family and friends, or like I heard in their families as well. So it's all good with that. Obviously, it's not nice to hear what you hear every day on TV and in the news, but it's getting a bit back more back to normal, if you can call it that way. Uh, it's a bit strange still. Obviously, uh, when you even when you walk outside because you are allowed in Spain now and you weren't before so from last saturday i believe yeah five days ago we were uh, we were allowed to start going out and do exercise the only problem here everyone started to go outside locally for me <laughs> it is widely reported jose that mike ashley is very very close to selling this football club to amanda stavey which is part of the pcp capital partners group with obviously in the investment of the ruben brothers but more particularly the saudi uh the pif which are worth a lot of money i think roughly 250 260 billion pounds yeah. First, okay. before we go into that <laughs> crazy money, yeah, crazy money. Um, but before we talk about the actual investors that are coming into Newcastle or potentially coming into Newcastle, is it the right time for Mike Ashley to leave this football club now, Jose? Because even 10 years, you know, obviously you left the club in 2011, nearly 10 years ago now, the club hasn't really had that relationship with the owner that, you know, a lot like you look at Liverpool, a perfect example. Look at the, obviously they have a fantastic relationship, relationship with their owners. Do you feel maybe now it's the, the time that Mike actually has to leave this football club? For me, listen, obviously, I, speaking from outside, I'm an ex-player now, so I can speak a bit more about it. Um, for me, the, at the end, Mike Ashley, is, he, bought, he bought the club and, and I think he did well in a few, few years on, on the club. Obviously, in other things he didn't, like any other owner, I believe. Obviously, the expectation Newcastle have and they are right to have is a top six team and they are not in that position. So obviously they are not happy with him because they expect to be the team where they deserve because Everton is there right now and Newcastle is much bigger team than Everton. He was much bigger team than Manchester City, but obviously the owner came and put so much money and he was there. Uh, so at the end, uh, it's what it is, you know, uh, there this, this should be a top six team. McCasley, if he doesn't want to spend more in the team or he doesn't have the time or whatever, and maybe it's the best time for him to sell, yeah, and more when you have good offers on the table. But at the end, like I say, it's going to be his decision. He's the one who owns the club. Uh, obviously, like you say, the fans, they are not happy with him. So he will, if, if I was him, I would sell it because at the end, it's, you are, I believe you are somewhere that, people are not happy with you or, or you are not happy with, it's better to change it, you know, and, and just leave it. And, and that's all. But at the end, it's going to be his decision. And But if it will be good for the club, hopefully, yeah, you never know. A lot of owners come, promise things, and then maybe they don't bring what you want. So you never know. But obviously, it looks like they want to come. And obviously, when you buy a club for that amount of money, it looks like you obviously you want to to do make it bigger. So I really hope Newcastle come back to the top six team again because they deserve it. They deserve it. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's, there's a lot of excitement um, on social media about this potential takeover. And you look at us, we talked about the people that potentially could run the club. If it does happen, Jose, and you look at the, the obviously the wealth that we've, we've just laughed before about the £260 billion pounds potentially that this, this, uh, the, the Saudis are worth. If Newcastle could get it right, could they replicate what Manchester City did, or could they replicate maybe other teams like Chelsea in say five, ten years down the line? Or is it becoming more difficult to break into that top six, top four, like teams like Liverpool and Manchester City that are competing in? How quickly could Newcastle get there if it, if this takeover happens? Well, in football, it's very difficult to know because look, Leicester. No one expected and they won the league. You know what I mean? And at the end, and they were there and everyone, yeah, yeah, they were the first and no chance, no chance. And play long balls and running with Barbie and things like that. And no chance, no chance. And then they won the Premier League with. So at the end, football, you never know. That's the reality. You never know. That they can fight with them teams. Maybe yes or maybe not. At the end, is is a guess, really. What I will, my advice to give to fans is 
don't just put your expectations too high or too low. Just be realistic and see what happens. Because as well, football is very controlled now, the financial ways. Uh, so they can arrive with the two billion and say, I want to buy Mbappé, this and that, because you have FIFA and FIFA control the wages, control this, just in case they leave the club. Obviously, you don't leave the club in a mess, you know? So, so it's not that easy. Like it, it was maybe when Chelsea arrived, Abramovich arrived and he spent so much money in players and everything like that. Now it's a fair play. You know, and you could see Manchester City has been banned for it. Uh, you know, so you have to be careful with them things. But I believe, obviously, if they come, obviously, they will have better partnerships as well. Maybe they will have other sponsors as well, maybe that they can bring money to the club and, and maybe they have more better players. And how long is going to take them to get there? If they get there, it's football. You never know. I wish for them it's next year, for example. But that you never know. It's football, and it, everything can happen. I believe as well. Steve Bruce is a is a is a very good manager. He's done really well when he's been really criticized at the start. But I believe, obviously, Rafa was a big step for for Newcastle when they signed him because Rafa, at the end, you're talking about a manager that has been in massive team, winning so many titles. He's won for Valencia, Liverpool. You know, he's been in Real Madrid. At the end. For me, sack someone like this, it wasn't maybe the best decision because he, the reality, every fan love him and you guys love him and in Liverpool they do as well because he's a top manager and I believe he wasn't, he was, you know, like at the end, signing a top manager for a team that at the moment he wasn't a, a top team in terms of comparing with other teams in the Premier League and, and now we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Obviously, if they come with money, I believe they can send good players, but then you need to like I said to you, at the end, it's not just good players. You have to make a good team together because at the end, football is not one player or two. It's 11 on the pitch, plus the obviously the people on the bench, the fans, they are already there. It doesn't matter what. So it's, <laughs> it doesn't matter if it goes well or bad. They're always there. So it's not about that, but it's about the players and they need to get the, the, the right players with the right mind, not just go there for money, go there to to really help the team. Uh, and, and that's all. But it's, it's very difficult to say that when they're going to be there because, like you say, it's other teams, they're spending so much money as well, and it's difficult. The Premier League is the most difficult league in the world to be there. That's why it's incredible what Liverpool is doing this year or Manchester City has been doing because people say, well, it's crazy. I say, it's crazy because Chelsea spend every year, you know, like Liverpool spend every year, Manchester City spend every year, everyone spend every year, and every year is more money in football. Obviously, it's not going to be now because of the coronavirus, but... But yeah, it's been like this, so it's not it's not easy. The Premier League is the most difficult in the world, definitely. Just a last couple of questions, Jose. Um, you talked about Steve Bruce, and I know he's still the manager of Newcastle, and that was very respectful of that. If this takeover was to happen, Jose, would you be, if you were say had a had a say in this, would you want, from a player's point of view as well, would you want Steve Bruce to still be given a chance, or if you see all this investment coming in? Would you like to see maybe you touch about Rafa Benitez and there's been links with Mauricio Pochettino that he potentially is the number one choice for these potential new investors. If from a player point of view, who would you like to see in the dugout for, for Newcastle? Well, at the end, I'm not going to go too, uh, too, too much on that because obviously I have so much respect for Steve Bruce for how much he's done in the Premier League. Uh, he's been so many years. He's a manager that they told me is a top man as well. Uh, players that they play under him that I know, they told me is a top man. But obviously, when you're talking about Rafa or Mario Pochettino, you're talking uh, an, uh, other level managers, not because of anything. It's because if you compare myself, for example, with Ashley Cole or with someone else, it's players that they won so many titles and so many things. So this is exactly the same thing. Uh, at the end, uh, you're talking about uh, 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 managers that obviously they are what Mario Pochettino did in Tottenham, it was incredible. You know, they arrived to a, with no spending much as well. Yeah, he brings so many young players to the team as well. And, and obviously, Rafa as well, he won so many titles. So, obviously, you're talking about other, I don't know if you say it in English that way, caliber of manager in terms of caliber, a, yeah. Yeah, a, a winning manager, really. Obviously, as a player, I put myself as a player that I play for another team. If you tell me no, Newcastle, uh, Maro Pochettino call me and tell me, Jose, you want to come here and enjoy, uh, enjoy the team? Obviously, it's oh, Mario Pochettino or Rafa Benitez is calling me. Uh, Steve Bruce as well, because I know him, but maybe someone from France doesn't know him or someone from Germany doesn't know him. But Pochettino and Rafa Benitez, everyone knows them. You know what I mean? So, obviously, in that yeah. terms, yeah, but I believe Steve Bruce has been doing really well for the team. And 
if he continue, obviously at the end it will be the club's decision. But I believe he can do well as well for the team. But obviously, when you, if you asking me about the other managers, you can the in terms of caliber, they are other type of managers. But Steve Bruce is doing really well as well, to be fair. So, like I say, I'm not gonna go too bad, too too deep on that. You know, it's at the end, it's not my it's not my business to talk about it. It's not my job. But Steve Bruce as well is he deserves the job because he's been doing well for the team when. So it was so many doubters as well. So, and he's done well. So let's see what happens. My final question, Jose. Obviously, there was a big, big scare, I think, in the northeast and obviously in Merseyside as well, when obviously you had the, the brain tumor. Um, just to give every Newcastle fan a massive update, it seems that you're happy, healthy, and it just seems that you look so much better. And you, do you feel so much better now, Jose? Do you feel that now? Obviously, have you been given the complete all clear on this now? Is it completely gone now? Yeah, well, first of all, one thing that I, I win and I'm really, really happy is that I can save my head and my partner doesn't say anything. Before, <laughs> before she even before she like it, she likes me with her. And obviously, because I have the treatment and obviously you lose your hair here, like I saw in some pictures before, obviously, with the treatment. I start to save it like that and she say, oh, you look okay on it and everything. I said, oh, so happy with that. I gained something from this tumor, you know what I mean? So I'm so happy because I do it more or less daily. And my B are the same, and I'm so happy. I don't have to go to the hairdresser anymore, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> but in terms of the brain tumor, it was a big impact, obviously, for us. Uh, but like I say, what it doesn't kill you makes you stronger, no? And and that's what it is. At the end, it makes me realize other things in life because at the end, when you retire as a player, it's difficult to replace that uh, because obviously, if you want to be a footballer, it's nothing like being a footballer and more in myself i've been really lucky to play for teams like newcastle or liverpool and and enjoy the football at the highest possible so obviously it's very difficult to replace that and sometimes when you retire you don't valorate as much that. and obviously this happens and made me realize that well it's gone now but i enjoy it i loved it it was years that i will never forget that like we were talking just now about it and and i love them and now it's another part of my life and now like i said i'm get um, i'm a football legend it's going quite well in january we did gonzalo villar from elche to rome so second division to first division serie a in serie a in, in italy and it's going quite well there and i'm enjoying it obviously it's not footballer no it's not footballer but i cannot play football anymore so i do something else and i'm enjoying it and that's the more important thing at the end I say that, look, I've been in a dark places, you know, not just because of my tumor, because of my retirement as well. And like people say, as a footballer, obviously, I win money and, and things like that. And I always say that to people. Uh, money is important, obviously, you need it to live. That's the reality. But it's not what it brings you happiness. Obviously, if you, if you, obviously, what it brings you, it can bring you relaxing in terms of, obviously, it brings you more relaxing there when the bills come and things like that. Obviously, if you have good money obviously helps you with that and the stress of the, the things like that or the holidays you can have things like that yeah of course but in terms of happiness i'm telling you i wasn't happy when i retired i wasn't happy and i was a footballer and i enjoyed so much being a footballer so and now i'm happy again and and that's I, i'm telling you this because it's for people as well that's in the interview you know that at the end i'm not so many people is suffering now economy wise so many people is without job Try to be at your best, you know. I look, I, I went through nearly that, you know, and and I took the positive of it. Uh, and at the end, try to take the positive of this. Try to enjoy as much as possible with your family. We are we are in lockdown, and and take. I believe you have to take the positive in all the bad things that happen in life because that's why what they say when you grow older, you learn more, and that's the reality. I'm really young still. I still learn every day. I have so many mistakes still, but these things, the two more thing, to be honest. Maybe it was a good thing for me to happen in my life. Imagine how crazy it sounds, you know, in terms of uh, because yeah, I, I was through very dark times. It was a, it was horrible. It's the reality. But in some other things, it was lovely. We live in Versailles for two months with my partner, with my dog. Yeah, I was going for treatment every day, but the people were lovely there. I met so many kids uh, and I held them that they recognized me there and they were so excited to see me there and help them as well on the way. And I can be an example for other people as well that is going through bad times as well like this, you know. So at the end, take the positive from things. And that's what I did from that is I'm taking the positives. It's no, it doesn't mean it wasn't hard. It was really hard. I'm telling you. I have the all clear that you asked me about it. I have all the clear. I still having checkups every six months. Every six months, I still have the checkup. I have the checkup 
No long ago, I put it in Instagram. I went for an MRI and it's all perfect. To be honest, now is for me at the start. Obviously, I was a bit scared, but now it's like a like a routine. I go to the machine and it fell asleep and everything. I fell like, like that and everything, so I completely <laughs> relaxed. You know, I, I don't expect bad news. In one point, it happens. Hopefully, never. But if it one point it happens, you have to do it step by step. You know, day by day. That's what it is. So that's what I'm trying to do: live daily, and that's the most important thing. I know we are in a shitty moment, everyone. You know, but. Try to enjoy it because time doesn't come back. Eh? We're getting older now. So, you know, we cannot buy this. That's the only thing you cannot buy time. Time doesn't come back. So, try to enjoy, try to be happy. I know it's difficult. We're not seeing our loved ones as well. So, it's quite a hard time not meeting our friends and things like that. But, but it's better times on the way. So, just think on that. I think every Newcastle family like wish you all the very best health wise, of course, in the future. And obviously, you you do, becoming Thank a football you. agent as well. So, yeah, that is the end of this interview. A, a big thanks again to Jose Enrique. Thanks and, to you, mate. Yeah, big thanks. No problem. Thank you very much, Jose. Thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs>